Have you ever decided to cross the sea? Now imagine you're a person who have never been on a long walk, yet alone set a foot in a gym, never been exposed or endured any type of physical challenge. In fact, the most physical challenge you've been through is climbing stairs, those steps. <laughs> My name is Sufana Dahlan, and up until two years ago, believe it or not, I was that person. In 2012, I joined a leadership program where the first activity was to cross, was to cross the sea uh, while the water was out. Five hours of walking in mud shallow water. You could not be slow, the water was coming back. It was too cold, especially for a person who's coming from the Middle East. And so, as I stepped into the water and saw the finish line, an outline of an island, questions started flooding. Am I really up to this? And do I really want to do this? Could I keep up with the rest of the group? Am I strong enough? to withhold the pressure of the water that will keep pushing me back? Will I be able to achieve it? And so, as I was addressing my concerns to people around me, I've heard feedback like, Sufana, if you're not up to it, you don't need to do it. Or, there is always an option of a sailing boat. Or another one, well, you come from, a, it's okay, my dear, you come from a culture where this type of activity is not part of your daily routine. Well, I had to make a decision, sailing boat or a bold walk. I chose to walk. I chose to challenge myself. And I, as, as we started walking, challenges started hitting both physically and mentally. Physically, I started feeling weak and tired after only a few steps. You see, the mud makes it very hard and very heavy. As you walk in the mud, your feet slip deep that your knees have to compensate. I honestly, I was overwhelmed. Muscles, muscles I didn't even know I had started hurting. Mentally, I was not prepared for something so, so challenging. After the first hour, I was, I was so exhausted. My body, my muscles became rigid and sore. You could see it in my face. So much that the professional guide took me aside and said, you can turn around now. There's still a way out. But if you continued, it's all or nothing. You cannot slow the whole group. The tides wait for no one. I remember I just felt so, I felt so lost that minute because I had to make a decision for myself and for the rest of the group. But the hard journey, thinking of this hard journey, made me think of all the decision I had made in my life. The path to achievement has not been an easy one for me. Throughout the course of my life, I have witnessed many obstacles and social barriers and personal hurdles. But it was precisely this that made me adopt, be stronger, and pave my path. That thought made me feel better. And, I, and as my heart pounded against my chest, something inside my heart told me to go on. I, I knew that I could not go through this without 
finding my inner strength and my self-motivation. And so I hummed prayers. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. I remembered loved ones. And I find myself trying an old Whitney Houston song that my mom used to play. Things are not easy. Things come with a lot of challenge. And that mud walk made me realize that something really, really special, that you cannot, during your mud walk, you cannot follow the steps of the person in front of you. Because if you do, your, step, your feet will, 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 will go deeper in the mud, and there, it's more likely for you to fall or get stuck. That made me realize that throughout my life, I've, I've never, I've always created my own path. I've never followed a path that was enforced on me or a path that was expected from me to follow or even a path that was taken by many other before me. I've always created my own path despite being bred in a patriarchal society. I have decided, I chose to study law in a country where the fem a female lawyer did not even exist. At that time, law was not permissible for women in Saudi Arabia. But my father had a vision that things will eventually evolve in Saudi and that women will partake in judicial realm. And so I pursue my, my request to study law, I pursue my request to study law and I was granted by the Ministry of Higher Education the first, first permission for a Saudi female lawyer. As you can see here, when we got out of deep mud, things were easier. I could talk to people next to me, enjoy the amazing nature, the birds, the sea creatures that was left on the seafloor, until we had to cross a channel, a channel filled with sea, uh, with sea water. Likewise in my life, after successfully completing my degree from Cairo University, I faced enormous challenge before I can practice what I, have, what I have studied, one of which is the evaluation of my law, my law degree the, to accredit my Egyptian diploma to, in Saudi. It was denied in the, in the beginning, it was denied because I did not have enough Sharia courses. And so I decided to have a master's in Islamic Sharia. I applied again. It was again denied because I did not have a proof of a male companionship during my university years. So I had to work as a legal consultant in the back offices, taking in the building frustration while many around me seems to be ahead in their career and I stood there still feeling useless. You see, the hardest moments are not when people don't believe in you. It's when you don't believe in yourself. My tipping point was when I started questioning my abilities. The answers to these questions helped me identify a path filled with opportunities. The trick was in finding my inner strength and navigating my path. For me, it consisted of having faith, knowing my strength and ability, identifying my weaknesses, finding inspiration and motivation, and making bold choices. Where there is no struggle, there is no strength, as Oprah Winfrey said. I too found my own strength within my struggles. You see, much of our character is formed from obstacles and frustration that we face and overcome. By the age of 25, I got married and moved to Kuwait. New life, new people, 
new environment, a new status. I decided, I, I decided to go back to legal practice, so I applied to a few legal firms, all of which required a legal license, saved for one, I was given a chance in corporate law, only to know that I was pregnant with a child with health complications that needed special care and attention. And so I decided to put my, my dream on hold and take care of my baby. I knew I couldn't manage one without sacrificing the other. And as my baby started recovering, my marriage started falling apart. Ironically, the more I tried to make the marriage work, the worse it became, which eventually led to my decision to become a single mom. Despite the challenges and the perception my culture has against single mothers. But my daughters were my strength and support. They helped me uncap the hidden wisdom and creativity in me. And so I decided to act on my gut feeling and, and my passion for social change and innovation. I decided to become a social entrepreneur. I had no idea about entrepreneurship world, Never, nothing. But that didn't hinder me. I decided, I decided to, to take my chances, to explore my abilities, and to learn out throughout the journey. And so I opened, in 2010, I opened a business consultancy, Teshkil, that incubates creative entrepreneurs. While molding over on how and where to get my initial funding, I started finding creative ways. I capitalized, really, on sweat equity. And just as just as on the other side of the, uh, of the water, just as we, we started seeing the, the island, unexpected cha challenges from unexpected quarters started, starting com started coming. Cold and fast blowing winds started hitting my body, leaving me breathless. That reminds me that as I started settling, thinking that I was settling down with my business, my business partners that have committed to work with me decided to part ways. Friends who actually promised to help backed out. I was left alone and left on my own. But that did not make me give up, nor did it make me lose hope. Because I've learned that with bold decisions, you, you face challenge. And with challenge, you become stronger. With faith, my faith started growing over time. And that made me determined more than ever. I started believing in myself. And so I took the reins of my, com my, of my company in my own hands and decided to show the world that I can make my company stand steadily and successfully on my own. Today, Teshkil stands on the forefront of the creative industry. We aim, to, we aim to unleash all the creative potential in the region in creating a creative economy. You see, even the sea can be crossed. It doesn't matter if you reach first or last. The journey across the mud led to a great feeling of liberty. I was actually 
one of the last people arriving to the land. And I remember that the minute I, I, I stepped on the solid land of the island of Amelin, the north of Holland, I fell on my back and looked up at the sky, and it was, in fact, one of the most happiest moments in my life. A year after my mud walk, in 2013, after 13 years of struggling to obtain my legal license, I am proud to say that I am one of the 10 female Saudi lawyers who have ever been granted the right to practice law. With resilience and perseverance, I was able to achieve my goals. I found my place when I found myself. And I will end my talk with a, with a Whitney Houston song that I hummed when my body ached and my hands numbed and my heart pounded. I decided long ago never to live in anyone's shadow. If, if I fail, if I succeed, at least I live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity. Thank you.